Well, severe problems on this 28-year-old girl. Uh, upper right central fractured, had to be extracted. She did have some composite on the other central and one lateral. So we had a single tooth implant, astro implant here, replacing the lost tooth. And we were doing... This is a temporary crown on the implant where we have sculpting, we are sculpting the soft tissue. And this is a finished case with the lateral and central, both veneers, and the upper right central single tooth implant. Now she wanted the other lateral, which we had been discussing before, to be veneered. So we are using the pointed instruments, pointed diamond, removing a very superficial layer of porcelain in the cervical area it is not more than 0.2 millimeter that's a little bit more than two pieces of paper we are not going through the approximal area measurely we are keeping the contact points in the tooth enamel cervical area as you can see i'm now cutting dry with with air cooling i'm cutting dry since i'm in enamel that's okay i can see them better from the side i can now see that the finishing line is very shallow in its preparation. It's all in enamel naturally. The incisal reduction is just very minimal since the tooth is going to be lengthened a little bit. But still we are always doing a slight incisal reduction and the reason is when you're seating this veneer it's very hard to seat it perfectly without having an indication more than the buccal surface of the preparation. You need the incisal edge in porcelain to have a definite seating position. Here we're using the 3M paper discs for rounding off the incisal edge. And that's the finished incisal reduction. So, so I, I think I, I removed enough here now to be able to get about the same anatomy as I have on that one. If I, if I gave it a chamfer here on the inside, this would be too sharp, this area here. So I'm just going out. So from the buckle you can see the finishing line, the finishing line very shallow. The uh, reduction on the incisal could be a little bit more, it doesn't really matter, but I'm still in enamel. Now it's a little bit too tight. I need a matrix in there when I'm taking my impression. So we're using a separate strip since the contact point is too tight. The matrix I'm using later during the impression taking is to help my lab technician class to be able easier to separate the dyes in the master model. So this is a matrix that we just cut from a normal filling matrix. And uh, I will do two holes in it, one on each side so that it will be better retained so in the, the impregum impression material uh, later. So this is just individually cut. And as I said, it's to help huge. class, our lab technicians. We should help our lab technicians more than we believe and more than we think. As often as possible, class, yes. And there, in order to uh, make them stick in the impression material. So I will just open up the contact points so that this one will come out with I the holes in the matrix band. We're trying the hydrocolloid tray. We're not going to take a hydrocolloid impression, but the hydrocolloid trays are perfect so since they are very rigid. And when you're using materials like impregum, which we are using all the time for these techniques, well, then you need rigid trays. And there are no rigid trays that are more rigid than hydrocolloid trays. You don't need any more extra retention than the... Uh, there were various anatomical details inside the trays. So now you can see the both matrix bands with the holes in place approximately. And it's very important that the tray does not interfere naturally with the matrix bands. Now this is just to show you how thin I can uh, run the block out resin, which I will use here to, to block out some undercut areas. Because but some undercut areas, especially if you have open embrasures, will prevent me from taking out the impression here. easily. Uh, so I have an I'm curing this. Getting the 
impression out. Block out resin, ultra dense block out resin. So here comes the permadine, the imprigum syringe material. I got showing and after that comes the tray with the uh, tray material. The time, I'm blowing, some air. I'm some blowing air. the permadine grant in place. Not water. And now this should polymerize for five to six minutes. Yes. This is the syringe material. Okay. Yes. And that's me. Now, the reason we are using uh, Imprigum is... Hello everybody. Um, the uh, patient uh, viscosity is sitting there for a couple of minutes and it doesn't taste that well. Yep, that was the alarm clock. Get it out. And you can see the matrix band clearly showing on e each side of the prepared lateral. These will now help class to separate the dyes in the lab. Now I'm going to do the temporary here. And if I'm pushing my temporary material up, in the tray that we have produced, I might harm the papillas. So I will then syringe phosphate cement on top of the papillas in this area I'm pointing out, and I will let that set. That means that any material I'm not pushing up here will not harm the papilla. And uh, that means that I will have a papilla that will be healthy next time. So I will just block this area out but I will do it from the lingual now. So I will Preparation here is that you can see the finishing line is still buckly to the contact point. So here comes the block out resin now. This is my second impression. We take one impression with the matrix band and then we take one impression without it. And to prevent the material from tearing, I will inject the block out resin and cure that Otherwise, the undercut area in the embrasure will make the impression tear. This is just a simple wax bite. Now, we got to do the temporary here now. And for that reason, we have a our first study model now the tray the for the temperatures is yeah. done on the study model or on the study model changed by the lab yeah, technician it, as you can see here due to the anatomy that we are going to give the patient later this, so this is the anatomy that we will give the patient later this is class mock-up and this is an a duplicate of this model that class is producing this is a duplicate of the model and this is the duplicate from the incisal and this is then the tray that Klaus is fabricating for the temporary veneer, temporary veneer. So this tray is filled on the lateral with some composite. And, very soft. and this one then? And in this one here. I can then not remove the composite. I will spot etch the enamel and I will use the extra tough temporary material here. This is actually a lab product. It's not tested for clinical use, but we are using it for that, and we are testing it for that. It's stronger, and it's less viscous. It works beautifully as a temporary material with thin sections of veneer. So we use this instead, and we'll then just inject this in this tray. So we try to figure out how much material we need to fill out the prepared space, but first we're spot etching the buckle surface. We are taking a photograph of this, so I know that I spot etched, and so I know that where we spot etched next time, so I know where to grind the enamel next time to know that I have removed all the composite. So here comes Stefan Ryan, I believe, with the camera to help us out. Yeah, push the button. 
click picture of Etchinamo. There it is. Thank you, Stefan. And this is then the phosphate cement before we put the temporary material up that I have syringed in place and it is not set now setting to protect the papillas as I was mentioning earlier. So the ESPA material, ESPA 3M material is syringed into the lateral position and the tray is seated with enough temporary material we hope comes from experience how much okay. and as you can see experience was experience was not enough this time we need more material we'll see. yep more material ah, bring it out and add some more material If you should do it, it's just to syringe some low, f low, low viscous material into this afterwards, into the buckle part of this veneer, temporary veneer. So curing of the composite. You can naturally use other temporary material as well, but they are very often quite, uh, they tend to fracture or they try to come loose from the tooth. Now we are removing the phosphate cement and the excess material of the temporary material. And then we're using an instrument. And we use then very often a scalpel. By spot etching the buccal surface, then by using a less viscous material like uh, this one, we will, and a tough material, we will secure that the veneer, temporary veneer, will not fall out and will stay there. We then might use some of the 48 fluted carbide burrs to um, remove the excess material. So the patient is, the preparation is now finished on the upper right lateral. Checking the occlusion only. And naturally this patient should have been treated earlier with the lateral veneer on this one as well. Now this is a 48 fluted carbide bullet shaped burr for finishing on the palatal surface. There we are. The three permanent restorations and the temporary restoration on the lateral. And what we've been doing here now, we were using this instrument to remove the excess material. The patient should be informed that you cannot use uh, floss or something like that during this week before we try and bond it in place because the embrasures are blocked. But the important thing is that the temporary material is not pushing on the papillas. This is the fluted carbide burr used in the cervical area if you want to remove excess material. And this is the one you use on the palatal. I think we can give uh, these our patient here a great opportunity. So the patient is now finished. Now next time we will have it tried in and bonded. She will now know the and who's there? The look like later. Well, that's class. The lab technician, actually, the artist. Now this is the clinical part later on, which was not shown to the public. Finishing line, not the shallow preparation, and definite finishing line. So this is the veneer a couple of weeks after bonding. Upper right central, astra implant, the three other teeth, veneer, crowns, or veneer. Before, looks a little bit different. Finished case from the palatal.